creatives, welcome back. Today we are doing our last dragon tutorial. Does it mean that I am not making them any longer? No, that is not the case. But from here on out, if anyone is interested, you can um, message me on the website and let me know what you're interested in. I can give you a price quote along with shipping um, because we can't, you know, every time I make a tutorial or every time I make a wreath, I'm always asked, is there a tutorial? I'd love to watch how you put that together. So I figured today would be the last day because we've already done red, we've already done green, we've already done um, silver. Today we're doing black and then I'm also going to be adding a um, gold to my shop as well. I just haven't made it yet. So we're gonna do this one live for you. Feel free to ask questions about the entire process or any part of the process that you don't understand and need clarification for. Now, I know that's super easy for those of you that are joining me live on Facebook right now. Um, for those of you that are watching YouTube as a replay, you can still ask your questions. Go ahead and type them into the comments below. I do go through and read those every day. So, um, Here's the one thing I will not be providing because I always get asked this, can I get a list of all the materials? Absolutely, if you're a member of my private group. My private group gets a detailed materials list of everything, where I got it, what the SKU number is, how long it was cut, how many pieces. So if you're interested in any of that, go to my website at catscreationsandmore.com and click on the private group. You have an option to join monthly or you can save some money and uh, join with the yearly option. I'd love to have you because starting next month, we're rolling into all of the holidays. We're gonna be doing some Christmas in July and then we're also going to be preparing for our um, Halloween and fall wreaths um, all the way through the um, rest of the year. So I hope that you will um, join me and come join the fun. We have a great wreath community that I think you will absolutely adore. So if you like this design, want to keep this tutorial so that you can find it later when you need it, click the share button below. That's what I did when I was very first starting off. If I had a design that I liked and maybe I didn't remember like how many or what color or where did they go get that, I just shared it to my Facebook page because it's so much easier to find it on my page than to figure out who was I watching when I was looking for this particular tutorial. So um, if you're a first time join, joining me today, welcome. I'd love to know where you're from and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So a lot of this stuff has already been pre-prepared, like cutting all the deco mesh pieces, those are already done. I've assembled all but six pieces so I can show you the technique. You can ask questions about that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pivot you down. So bear with me one moment. Dropping you down below so that you can see measurements. You can also see the start of our um, dragon head. I'm going to open up my uh, live so I can... Um, type in some of the stuff that you guys are already going to ask. So I'll go ahead and get that started first. Um, let's see. Uh, I always hate finding out where's the period in um, using my tablet. Okay, so this is already available. For those of you that are interested, it's available on my website currently. So... Um, this is the only one I'm making with this particular color combination because I've had the deco mesh for a long time. So in doing so, it gives you an exclusive design that nobody can replicate because odds are um, that material is no longer available. So what you will do, and I will be posting these after it goes to replay status, I will post the links for where to get the dragon embellishment, also where to get the eyes, because I'm always asked about the eyes. So I will include those links of where you can pick that up on Amazon and also the eyes. And then I'm gonna walk you through all the pre-prep stuff that we're gonna do. Um, another question I'm always asked is where'd you get the ring board? So the ring boards now, um, you can get them at uniqueinthecreek.com. So they're a Canada-based company, but they do sell within the United States. So if you cannot find this, 
um, on Amazon. You can also find them at a lot of the local craft online craft places. base that you will need for the design. If you've noticed, I've already added all my six inch zip ties to the outside only. We're going to be doing something a little bit different on the inside. So I'm going to set this aside. That's already pre-prepped so you guys don't have to watch that. We will be adding our cord before we start laying our mesh in. But here's what the costume or the embellishment kit looks like. It is a child's um, dragon costume and you get the mask you get the tail and you get the wings so I'm going to try to put all this in one central place so these are the way that the wings will open so wings tail and the face and I've already like modified these so that they will work with the ring board to make them easier to ship that is usually the the challenge right everyone's like well why aren't you doing the s-shaped dragons because they're too hard to ship they're too expensive to ship um and all they're doing to do the s-shaped dragon is they're cutting their ring board in half and making it in an s shape i prefer this method i just think that if you're using the petals in the manner that i've designed um, it, it makes sense. So I'm all about making sure that things logically look the way they should. I don't use things that are overly large. I try to keep everything into scale. So um, that's what we're going to be doing on here. I've And I'll show you how I prepped the wings. Generally, the wings come together for um, the child's costume. Like I'll show you the the gold ones. So... They kind of come like this so you get an elastic piece that you would slip on you know through your child's arms and then they have their wings I've already removed that so that it will attach to our board and look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing you also get the tail which has a little hook in it and so this is designed to hook on to the back of your pants so that you can um, as they're walking, they kind of have access to their tail. And then the mask just slips on with um, the, whatchamacallit, the elastic. So they would just slide that over their face. So that is all the pieces for the dragon. We've already talked about the board. I prefer to do three colors of deco mesh. You can do four, you can do as many colors as you want, honestly. Um, and so here's some of the things that I have done on this particular um, dragon costume. I've modified it a little bit. Um, the nose openings, like the gold one, the nose openings are generally, uh, they're kind of painted a cheesy red color. Um, and if you noticed on the silver dragon that we did, um, I blacked those out because I thought it looked better to be blacked out rather than red, especially if you're not going to implement red into your design. I felt here on our dragon, it looked a lot better um, to go ahead and black those out. So I've already gone in with a Sharpie and kind of colored those um, outlines already done. So now we're going to add the eyes. These are 25 millimeter resin eyes. You can get those off of Amazon. So hi Blanche, hi Peggy, hi Amy, hi Joanne, hi Cheryl, Gloria, and Janie. Welcome. Right? Um, the Calico Pig Craft says I blacked mine out too on the silver one. Sometimes they just don't look right. Like they look a little odd. So we're going to go ahead and attach the eyes so that it has time to set up and glue solid. Um, and for playing, just to see um, how I like them. Like when I order my dragon eyes, they kind of come in a case. And so I'll pull out ones that I think I might like and set those aside. And then I just kind of stick them behind the mask and see what I think. Now, how do I stick them behind the mask without gluing them? Super simple tip. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and reveal to you a packing tape. 
So I've taken packing tape and just stuck those on so that I can see, hey, how does that look when I am, um, you know, does that color look right? What the color mesh that I use? And here's the interesting thing, right? I had a gorgeous deco mesh picked out for this. It's black and gold tinsel. So I'll show you that in a moment. And then I'll show you why things became a challenge. So just putting, you know, packing tape, gluing or taping them on, they don't stick very well, but you can at least hold those and see, okay, do you like the way that that presents? And then um, you will need a piece of felt. You could do one whole piece. There's a lot of people who say, just use, just stick the eyeballs to the felt and then you don't have to worry about where glue is. You could do that. Um, I have to remove my tape first. There are people who cut into the costume and try to insert the eyeballs in there. I'm not a fan of that one, but let me show you what I do. So I'm going to flip this over. My piece is cut exactly where I want it to be. So sometimes when you're looking at your eyeballs from the back, it's hard to know which way is up. So what I do so that I can see it on the back is wherever my eyeball is, I go to the back and I add a little dot, do it on the bottom, find the center, put your little dot, and then from here, you're just going to connect your dots, right? So this tells me this is straight up and down. So when I go to insert them, I know which way is up. I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well. So just dot right on the tip, go to the back, another little dot, and just connect the dots. Just like that. So that when I am putting them in, I already know, hey, this is the way the eyes are looking Oops. on the opposite side. So that when I go to glue them, the eyes are in the proper place. So we are going to, um, I'm going to make sure I have not cut this and I know I've told you in the past you can cut them, but sometimes it just does not work really well. So I want to make sure my eyes are centered perfectly. Wish they'd stop falling through, but real world problems, right? Making sure that the space between like where my fingers are, that I have an equal amount of space between them. So I don't have like one eye closer, one eye farther out. So straight up and down like that on this one. And I am going to do the back. I'm going to glue to the center. I'm also going to glue all the way around. And I'm also going to glue around the outside where my eye hits the mask. So I want a nice bead through there. Then I'm going to take this, try not to burn myself. I'm going to overlap this so that my glue hits the inside nice and tight. Making sure that's right on there. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing. I want to just double check to make sure my eyes match. Just like so. Making sure they're straight up and down. And that they are centered in the eye socket. They like to just slide down. You can get really creative if you want your dragons to have a tear because your hot glue can act as a tear since it's clear. 
at least if you use the Gorilla Glue sticks. We're going to make sure that that big blob that we put on the center is right over our center. Should be fine to flip those over. And all of my eyes match. So we've got good dragon eyes right there. So now we're going to just set that aside. I'm going to flip it upside down so that this has gravity working on it. And it'll go ahead and put that in place. While we go ahead and assemble the body. So the first thing that you want to do is you need to attach your hanger. So this is all part of the prep. So if you look at the ring board, there is a space up here where we want to attach our hanger. This is also going to be the top of the race. So this is also where we're going to be attaching the, the wings to this design. So I'm just going to use gold cord because we're using black and gold. I'm just going to go up one side. Let's do it this way. Down one side, up the other. I want to make sure that we have a pretty good hanger for this. I'm going to just put a dab of glue on the end because we know that all this will want to uncurl because it's a braided cord. So that cord is one eighth inch and I got it from Michael's back during Christmas. And I usually get them in all different kinds of colors because that's what I use them for is the hangers. Nice and tight. And so this is actually going to stay in the inside and our hanger is here. Okay. You can trim those down if you like, but honestly, they're going to get incorporated into the design. Okay, now I'm going to show you how we prep the, um, the petals. So we're using gold, right? I told you we were doing the dragon in gold and black. So here's the challenges that I faced with doing this color is, let me pull out all the color golds I had considered using. We had this color, but it's a little kind of orangey. It feels more orange than it is true gold. Um, then I pulled out another color. And this one to me felt a little too yellow. Like it's trending more to yellow and not gold. Here we had the wide foil. Again, it felt too orange for me, not a true gold. And that's the problem with gold. Even though it should be super easy, it's either going to go too yellow, too orange, or you're going to kind of get the right, um, the right color combination. I had this one. It felt a little too yellow. This one was a little closer, but it's kind of like an open weave waffle mesh. So it wouldn't give the coverage that I was looking. So I was like, okay, I'm in the right color pattern. What can I do? So thankfully, we had a true gold. And this is from Craft Outlet. It is trending to the color gold like it is in his eyes. It's not too yellow. It's not too orange. It's kind of like... I don't know, Goldilocks. It was just right. So with the wood burning tool, I have cut these into exactly 10 inch pieces. So it's 10 inch mesh. You will cut them to 10 inch pieces so that you have a perfect square. Wood burning, to uh, wood burning tool to cut that will help keep your phrase down. You will need a handful of six inch zip ties. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your finished edge here. You're going to go from the corner down to the opposite corner, make a triangle and try to line it up as best as you can. It's not going to be entirely perfect, you know, cause deco mesh kind of moves and goes. So here's our triangle. 
I'm going to just tilt it this way so it's easier for you to see. This one's kind of moving on me. So let's get it back in line. There you go. Making sure this piece up here all lines up. We got it corner to corner. Okay. And you're just going to take this corner and go to the opposite corner. Okay. And I'm going to, this is the point that we really want to focus on, but I'm always overly particular. I always like to make sure that everything looks even. It kind of starts to resemble a little bit of like a Star Trek logo like that. Okay. Then once you have it here, you're going to take this corner and bring it to the opposite corner. And then it starts to turn your shape, your triangle into like a shark fin, an elongated shark fin. That's what I call it. And down here at the bottom, not where the point is, we're going to add our zip tie. Could you use a rubber band? Could you use floral wire? Yeah, you could, but it's so much easier to do it with a zip tie. And then I'm going to snip the end off. And this is where most people stop. They just, they let their petal be the way their petal is. And I don't like this because you can start to see it pulls back from itself. And I want it to be closed because I want it to stay in that defined shape. So what I do, have a chip clip, have a clothespin handy, and I'm gonna open this up where it opens and I'm gonna lay a small bead of glue all the way along here. And I'm going to hold those two edges closed and I'm going to overlap it right along that edge. And then we're going to take our tip clip so it holds it there until it dries. And I'm really going to focus on the end because a dragon should have scales. It shouldn't look fluffy or rounded in my opinion. So the scales was what I was looking for because if you look at it from the wings, if you look at it from the tail, everything has scales so just like a dragon would we need to make the scales kind of look like these little mini shark fins so that's what i've done so this is all ready to go i just need to set it to the side and let it stay glued now the next color i decided to go with this is a premium wide foil um black so we're going to pair this black and gold, same thing, finished edged here, corner to corner. And then I'm just going to try to keep them even. I'm going to go from my corner here to my corner at the top. Make sure all my sides kind of match up. Large Star Trek logo, right? It's kind of shorter on one side than it is on the other. And I usually put my finger in the center so that that does not move as I am flipping over my other piece. And then there's our shark fin. On this side is where I put my zip tie because this reminds me, hey, this is a side you need to incorporate in the board. This is, for me, this side up. So having the zip tie up tells me this is the piece that goes in, opened in here. Here's our open pieces again. Bead of glue. Going to match up the ends. Take our other chip clip. Go ahead and set that right over the edge. So now we have black and gold. Hi, Audrey. Um, now we're going to use that specialty mesh that I told you about. So this is the black and gold. This is known as a tinsel style mesh. There we go. So it has this wide band of tinsel. It's on black mesh, but then it also has gold metallic foil through it. So again, cut your pieces. Here's our finished edge corner to corner, 
go from one corner to the other. Lift it up. Keep your ends straight, just like so. Place your finger in the center just to keep that fold in the center. There's our really nice point. It stays more defined if we glue them. Otherwise, they have a tendency of just staying open. And for me, on my Dragon Race, I want them closed. So I'm going to do the same thing. Keep them together here, the two pieces. Lay down a small bead of glue. Go ahead and line those up. Keep the ends together. Put your chip clip on them and then set those aside so that those three pieces can dry. Okay. Yes. So you, Cheryl, you can get the dragon eyes from Amazon. You just like what Calico Pig Craft said, just type in dragon eyes, put it in 25 millimeter ones though, because that's the size you will need. Okay. Now what we are going to do is, and I've had several people comment, they're like, I don't understand what you mean by inside outside. So on the outsides, we have a hole close to the center or to the inside center. We have a hole on our form closer to the outside of the center. And then we have a hole in the middle. So we're going to be alternating when we put our middle piece in, whether we put, cause I don't have them in yet, whether we put our zip tie in this section or we put it in this section. So this says inside hole, and this is outside hole. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to try to put these. The board wants to stay elevated because the little zip tie ends are staying on there. So this is how we're going to place them inside. So here I'm taking, remember I said I put my zip tie so the head is facing up. I don't want my corners this way. I want them this way because I want those points to all be facing out. So I'm adding my inside piece to the pre um, done zip tie. I go over the zip tie, just tighten it down. So this is the inside foil or scale. Snip off the excess, okay. Then we're gonna take the solid black. Should have got the regular black. It's got time to set. So here's our black. Again, opening here, zip tie up. We're putting this on the outside hole, closest to the outside. So let me zoom in for you guys. Outside hole. I'm gonna crank my zip tie on there. Snip off the end so that our petals are all laying in the same direction. Now, this is where we come to that stage where I'm going to be adding my third piece in the middle. So I'm either going to share the hole with the inside piece or the outside piece. Whichever one I start, the one that comes after is going to go opposite. So I'm going to start here with the inside hole, which means I'm sharing the hole with the inside scale piece going up through the center. Go ahead and close that. So we're sharing, zoom in a little bit closer so you can see, we're sharing the inside hole. So we're going in the middle, but using the hole closer to the inside. That's what I mean by inside hole. Okay, we're not sharing the outside hole. So now I'm going to take that two-tone black, again, zip tie nub up, because it always just reminds me, hey, this is the way you need to lay those. And then I'm just going to zip tie that down and snip that off. So for the next one, again, same thing. We're taking a piece of gold we're gonna lay the gold in, 
open edge facing the inside. I'm going to go ahead and just go right over these. Crank my zip tie down nice and tight. We're going to add the outside piece. Go ahead and get that one a little bit tighter. There's our outside. This is the outside going to the outside piece. Now here is we're going to share the hole with the outside one. So I'm going to use that space in the center. And then I'm going to go up and share the hole with the outside piece to put our little other one here. So these are going in. I like to try to incorporate, like if they overlap a little bit, um, I try to put them in the hole so it gives them extra security. Just like so. And then we're going to continue the process all the way around. And it starts to go really easy once you have all of your zip ties set. So there's that one. And these will flex and move. So if the customer wants them to go wider or they want them to go narrower, there is some play in here. Let's get you back up. So let me add the inside. So this one is going to go middle, but the inside hole. So we go, here's our inside sheared hole up through the center. Making sure everything is situated the right way. And then by putting the zip ties there previously, the petals or the scales will not pull out. They will just stay in place and allow you that um, ability to move all your pieces wherever you want them to go. So inside, we'll do the outside piece. So it just means that it's sharing the outside. It's right on the outside of the hole. And this one's going to be shared whole to the outside because we did the inside. So we're going to go up through the middle, use that shared hole for the outside. Then go ahead and place that again back in the center. So you're starting to see the petal laying together. grab more pieces. So see how like this gold, the tail is a little long. I'm just actually going to put it in the same hole with the gold because leaving the tails a little bit long help you to cover up the gray portion of the board. Here's our black. I'm going to go ahead and trim up that little fray that's right there. I'm going to go ahead and place that inside. Make sure everything's lining up. I've been known to do that before. Move one of my zip ties and not realize, hey, you know, you didn't have the opening on the right side. So this is going to be a shared hole with the inside. So we go to the inside hole and then back up. So we're alternating so that it gives it like really good coverage. But if you wanted to, you could just do like you could put two pieces in 
do a shared hole here and then do a shared hole here and do a grand total of uh, there'd be another set of 16 so you need six 16 of each color depending upon how you want to build it okay three more And it doesn't matter whether you do inside first or outside first. It's entirely up to you. My chicken just laid an egg. I can tell because she's singing. She's doing the egg song. Which is interesting. They get all happy when they lay an egg. It's like, hey, come check out what I just did. Back over here. Now I prefer not to see that gold coming, the black coming through. So I'll always pull one out and then push my center ones a little bit closer to the center because I don't want to see the black coming through in between those. Let me make sure. Hi, Karen. Hi, Eileen. Do you know of any place where you can buy just one set of eyes? Uh, you might be able to try, yeah, like Joanne says, try Hobby Lobby or try Etsy where maybe someone just wants to sell one set, but they're not that expensive to get. Um, I'm trying to think. Like the 25 millimeter ones I think you get like 25 sets so you just never know you might start off with one and people like what you did and one leads to two two leads to three and so on Oop, I forgot to put in the shards here so we did shared inside, so we're going to do shared outside right in here. Got two carried away. So we're doing shared outside. So down in the center. And come up. Okay. And of course, my zip tie turned. get that in. Okay. And I had them sitting right here. So it should have flagged me. Hey, girly, you have two. You need to go back in and add in all your other ones. So that goes over. And then this goes over that. And now we do shared inside. So here, up and around, oops, so shared inside, there we go, just right there. All right, three more. It starts to make a really cool pattern after a while. And I see a couple pieces here. So we'll clean those up while we see them. See, basically your middle piece goes to cover that gap. So now we're doing shared outside. So up the middle 
and then to the hole on the outside. Making sure our scales are all going in the same direction. This would make a nice moon looking wreath with the um, gold and the black. black. Here's our gold. I'm just trying to get the heads of my zip ties out from under the board so it'll actually lay flat. And then this one is going to be shared inside. So we go up the inside hole and then through the middle. And then I'm going to make sure that my mesh is in the center so that we can contain that even further. You can cut them down. I just prefer to leave them on because it just really helps cover your board. We are making it around. Oh, thank you for the stars, Sandra. Camera just zoomed way in. Wow. Okay, we will zoom out a little bit. Thank you guys for letting me know. Okay. Inside. Outside. I'm always trying to make sure I get the mesh from the previous piece and get it under so that I can tighten that down so it stays underneath the prior. And so we're doing shared hole outside. So remember, we have our hole here in the center. You're going to go down through your middle and up with your shared hole to the outside. This is why I say outside. Three more. And let's get our gold in. So see how we have that tail? I just take the tail and stick it inside my loop. And then I'll go ahead and take this one, put it in right over the top. So I'm containing those ends so they don't just pop out on their own. Keeps it to have a nice even look. Same thing here. Move all your tails over. And then our gold now shared inside. So it means go to the inside hole, come up through the middle. I just get the loop started. Then we'll place our piece in. Okay, right here. So you notice I have not attached my wings and we're getting to the end. So what I will do to show you how I'm attaching the wings is I will just get a plain board that does not have the scales on it so that you can see. Okay, what did what did she just do? I didn't, I didn't quite understand what she just created. So inside, 
push your pieces in with that. There's that one. The outside. Also, when it starts to get a little closer, when you go up and underneath, um, that's where I was telling you, I'll show you how, you know, what we're doing inside or outside. This is going to the outside. And sometimes I forget, you just pull up the two outside pieces and look and see where did you share your hole. And then just go the opposite for the next piece. Okay, let's go ahead, get these, place this on the inside, put our scale so the open end is here. Nice and tight. Taking our outside piece, just like so, and then we will be sharing inside hole. So it just means go to the inside, up through the middle. For this other piece to sit in. And sometimes you'll notice like little pieces, like a lot of it is just the phrase from the tinsel. up here. I was like, oh, am I short? No, I have the two up here I didn't do. Okay. Back in. Is it doing that thing again? What the heck? Okay. I'm trying to, to do the zoom in on what I'm doing because that's generally where people get lost the most. They're like, I didn't see what you just did. So I'm trying to give you the closest look possible. So right here, outside. In, I think we went inside. Yes. So now we're going to go outside. So we go middle hole and then the hole closest to the outside. And that's where our little gold piece will wind up right inside here. So it just overlays the two, the gold and the black. We have three more. So once again, let me show you what we did as far as the petals, because I have to make another set. Um, I have our gold, I have our black, and I have our gold and black. So we'll just do this one more time in case you joined late. Finished edge, pieces are cut 10, uh, 10 inches uh, wide. 10 inch mesh cut to 10 inch pieces with a wood burning tool. We're gonna to go corner to corner on the diagonal. Okay, then I like to turn it so that we can keep it straight. And we're gonna go from this corner to this corner, trying to keep it folded. Making sure all my pieces match. I don't have like a sloppy overlap. So this is where I said it starts to look like the Star Trek symbol. 
and then we're going to go from this corner where my thumb is up to the top, folding it a third time. We are going to zip tie that up. So this is my top side. This is the way they go in to the wreath form. That's why I have the head of my zip tie facing up. And without the help, they kind of look like this. They're kind of a little too large, a little too over the top. And I want to keep them close to the way they are when I fold them. So a little dab of glue. Make sure your ends match. We're going to do chip clip. Set that one to the side. We'll do our black finished edge, end to end, corner to corner. Go ahead and pull that one out. And then we're going to take this bottom corner and bring it up to the top corner. And we'll put our zip tight in again. Nice and tight. I guess I could take all those and just throw them in the trash. I don't know why. Normally I do. Like, kind of clean as I'm going. I'm like, when I was doing it by myself, I was like, everyone I clipped, I was like, throw them in the trash. Same thing. Just a bead of glue. It's kind of like rabbit ears. And I'm just keeping them together. Another chip clip. So the points stay pointy. The little arch stays here. And then our last piece is this tinsel color. Black with tinsel. So top to bottom. Same thing. We're going end to end. Make sure everything lines up. Got a good overlap. And then we're going from this corner to this corner. I mean, you could take a weighted book if you wanted and try to keep it down in place because it's such an unusual fold. And then up. Clip that end off. So see, here's the opening. Here's the two sides. I want to keep those together and I want them to line up with the outside piece. So I'm just adding a drop of glue, like just a short line. Match them up. Chip clip right where I've glued it. So those will dry and then the pieces will stay closed and the, the form will stay in place. So that we can come over here and get these last ones in. So we have our gold facing up. Let's get the piece in with the tail. Going right over the top. Trying to get that one down. We're working in that small space where we've got just two rows left. Same thing here, taking both of those pieces, the little tails, keeping them under and under that loop. And then now, we're going to go shared hole to the outside. So our zip tie here, or not to the outside, sorry, to the inside. Okay, take our last piece, not last last, but close enough, right over the center. Tighten that down. 
And then our last one, you kind of have to push everything up so that you can expose your holes underneath for the last piece. Here's our gold, pushing the remnants in. I'm gonna flip that over because I can tell by feeling that I had the zip tie in the wrong direction. I'm gonna lift this up and set that in the center because I can't really put that into the zip tie from before because it didn't exist then. That was where we started. Nice and tight. Put in our last black back this way. Up and over. Kind of push everything else in place. Making sure it all has room to fit. Okay, there's that one. And then our last one is going to be shared hold to the outside. So I apologize, this one's going to be hard for you to see, but we're going down the middle hole and up the hole closest to the outside to put in our final piece right here. So back under. Try to make sure I got all the edges in. Just like that. And now I'm going to just move things around. So for shipping purposes, I keep them tight to the inside, but for display purposes, you just take your scales and you pull them out like so to give it the width that you'd like. So there is that much play in there for you that you can move them out just like that. And again, like I said, I don't like the, um, the middle color coming through. So I'll always make sure that I push those further to the outside so that the gold connects all the way through. And then that is your ideal look that you're striving for. So now we have to attach the wings. So the wings are going on right here. Remember I told you the shared hole for our cord. The way the wings are, once you pull those straps off, you want to make sure that you have the points. This is up. I've seen some people that have their wings going this way. That's not correct. So make sure your tips go up. And the first thing that I did is I took my wood burning tool and I, I had to make a place where I could keep the wings together. So wood burning tool, boom, right through, right through again. Make sure well ventilated area because the fumes from this, not pretty. So I have my, all my doors open, the garage door open before I'm doing that. And then what I did, so I'm gonna use this one to show you. Here's those holes on the top. What I did is place that over and so they line up here because that's how they're going to attach. And I did the same thing once they were in place. Pop my wood burning tool in, pop my wood burning tool in so that um, when I went to pull this off, I could see the holes, like the little starter holes. So then I could take this, pick them up, and push them and get them to go all the way through to the other side. So it's going to attach by the top holes, not the holes here. But we need to prep that a little bit. So I go with a thicker um, zip tie. The other ones are really thin. If you look at them, these are what I'm using to add the deco mesh. And this is what I'm using to keep the, whatchamacallit, the wings on. Okay, so the first thing I want to do 
is I want to zip tie these together. So I'm just going to push that through, push this one up and through. There we go. And I want them tight. So I'm going to go down through the zip tie. There we go. I'm trying to pull it through. Nice and tight because I don't want the wings to flop around. I want them to stay stationary. Like once it's flat up against the board, then it'll keep it from flipping out. So now when I go to add this, because it'll be hard for you to see this when I'm adding it to the actual board, I'm going to be taking two more zip ties, the big ones, and I lay it over right here's all our scales going here so the wings attach from the back and so you're going to take your zip tie you're going to go through the back side of your wing right here so I'm going to go pre-do those there's that one this one there we go Pull them all the way down and of course let's see if we can turn this one yes we can okay so those are going to go through the shared hole where we've added the hanger just like this and you're going to grab them and zip tie them tight to the board so i found this way is a little easier because me trying to describe it to you with the um, scales already on makes it a little harder so we're just gonna zip tie those down. They'll be zip tied here on the inside so you won't see them. So let me show you what that looks like. Here's my shared holes. Here's my cord at the top. I'm gonna bring that down. You gotta go up through your cord hole. I'm trying to find where my zip tie end is. Oh, it went under my mesh. So I want it to go over my mesh. So I've got one in place. I need to do the other one. Actually, let's try to do this. I think I can do it. Let me just keep these closed so it doesn't fall. I'm gonna go up through my other hole. Okay, I've got them both secured. Need to make sure that that's centered. I'm going to go under my cord and I'm just going to zip tie those nice and tight to the board. So, this is why having zip ties, a thicker zip tie, will really tighten those down. So, there is the look for uh, touching the wings. So you don't even see how those are attached. Make sure I don't, I don't wanna cut my cord while I'm trimming my zip ties off. Okay, so if I flip it over, this is exactly what we've done. So we've zip tied it here to keep the wings together We've zip tied it here in the shared holes for our cord because that's how it's going to hang. Okay, so we're going to flip this over. And the other uh, question I get asked is, um, so how do you attach the tail? So super simple. The tail, remember, we're following the path of the scales. So you can see how the scales now are lining up in the same direction that our tail is. They're all going in the same direction. So we wanna make sure that we keep the tail on this side, that we don't attach it this way, because I've seen that happen before and I'm like, it, it doesn't even logically make sense. You gotta have scales to the outside. So we've got this little hanger piece here. So the way I can explain it to you is to show you on 
the plain board. Okay, so here's where our wings are. We're going to take another large zip tie and depending upon where we want to have the tail come, um, you, you're going to have a stretch space. So if you want your tail to come in here, that's where you're going to add your zip tie. If you want it to hang a little bit lower, this is where you'll hang your zip tie. If you want it further down here, this is where you'll place your zip tie. So looking at the wreath, let me pull this back over. Where do I want the tail to fall? Well, I'm looking here and I kind of want my tail kind of midway up, maybe right about here. So then if the customer wants, they can hang their tail this way. You can go a little bit lower. I wouldn't go any lower than that because at this stage, you won't be able, there won't be anything for you to attach it to. So I kind of like it about midway. So I'm going to go shared outside hole. Let me go through the other. I have to go down one side and up the other. And of course it's always hard to see. So down here and I'm going to go up. So I'm going to flip this over so you can see. I brought my zip tie up and I'm going in here. Okay. So that when I flip this over, Here's my up, here's my zip tie. I'm going to create a little zip tie notch here. Okay, we'll go ahead and trim this off so that the tail will now clip under the zip tie right in here. And then the other ones on the outside are going to cover that space so that we have the tail, the tail, like I've had someone buy them and um, they've taken fishing wire and they've like, you know, did fishing wire through one of the holes and they brought their tail up rather than just hanging straight down. But that in a sense is exactly what we've done. So let me show you on the plain board so you can see. Okay, so on the plain board, okay, here's our top. We said that we wanted a little here, so we're gonna go down in the outside hole, up, right, here. We're gonna add those two together. We're making a hanger, okay? You don't have to go super, super tight. Clip that off. Then when the customer comes in to hang it, cause it's got a little hook, they're gonna bring it up under, and that is how it is going to hang. And of course, with the tinsel ties, it has, uh, it's sharing space, but you could take that, close that if you wanted, but that's how the tail gets attached because when I ship them, I don't ship the tail attached. I leave the tail off. A lot of times what I'll do is take like a red Sharpie, and I'll do this so that the customer can look for this underneath. And then what I do is take a little label, wrap it around here and put insert tail here, insert tail here so that they can match and put that whatever way they want. Some people don't want to hang the tail on it. That's entirely fine up to you. Options, right, for this. So we have added we know where our tail's going to go. So here is that Sharpie. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. So you, it's easy to find, just look for the red. But I usually put the labels on it so that it's a little easier to find. And then now we're gonna attach the head. So you can decide where you wanna put it. Some people put it right in the center, okay? So that you have to do this um the dragon wings and head in the center although it looks a little odd if you have your tail here but it could work it's kind of like what i imagine this whole look is is he's kind of curled up in a little ball here's his tail here's his head but i prefer to add the head over here 
because that starts to make sense with how he is like curled up in a ball. Then you have his tail over here and then you can add, like I said, fishing string. Let me add his tail in here. You could add in the fishing uh, wire and just wire that in here so it looks like how he is supposed to be. Okay. And to add the head, it's super simple because I make it to where if you want to move the head, you can take the head. I'm just going to take this off. We're going to make it sure so it's nice and even. We're going to take our head. And all I'm going to do is reach around the back with those elastic ties. Let's make him come up just a touch. Not too much. Let me see what that looks like. Put him right there. So I want to pull one of his little scales out of the way. So I like him right there. And so I'm just going to tie him into the back. Um, so now I'm trying to tie without looking and keep it nice and tight. So now he is on there. So now we've got our dragon. We'll add our tail and I'll show you what it looks like. But you have the option. I, I include that with the purchase of having the flames come out of his mouth. And the flames are super simple. You're just going to get wide foil orange mesh, wide foil red mesh. I have three of each piece. And what you're going to do, 10 inch cuts again, you're gonna go from the corner and you're just going to roll. Okay, and you don't have to be super like right on point. Let me just hold these with my zippy clips chip clips however you want to do it I kind of like them a little off center chip clip let's do let's try two of each and I don't attach these because some people prefer their look not to include flames so I don't attach them but I include them, so if you want to add them, I'm going to show you how we add them. So I'm going to take these two. I'm going to chip to clip those together until we get another red in place. So we're just rolling on the diagonal. And you don't have to roll super thin. You can roll super thick. Let's do the other two since I had them already cut. I did three each. So make this one a little bit bigger. So those are our flames. Okay. So I intermix them and then I also stagger them. So like short, um, a little bit long. We're going to do the same thing here. Maybe have a longer piece and then a shorter piece and then a longer piece here. Let's see if we can get those to work. And I fold them in half and put a nice big zip tie around it. Which is, oh, I did have one. Okay, so I'm going to zip tie this entire bundle together. Nice and tight. So it does not look like flames. Great. Just like that. We have short pieces, long pieces. And then this, believe it or not, just fits right underneath the dragon's mouth. He's kind of got a little bit of a concave to him so that it just slides in. It's not going to come out unless you pull on it. But that is 
how you would make your dragon wreath. So let me show you what it looks like when we put it up on the door and then I'll answer any questions you might have. Take this one down first. Okay, let me pivot you up. Moving you up. So I'll show you the look on two different doors. So this is what it looks like on a light door. So we're gonna take our dragon. I'm gonna get hung right here. Let's put his flames back in. I'm trying to keep his head where I want it straight. I want to make sure he's centered. Once we add the tail, it'll counterbalance him. And here's where we're adding our tail piece. And there's our dragon. So what I was saying is if you get the fishing twine, you can kind of pull his tail in here because there's nothing, there's no wire or anything inside his tail to get it to fit where you might prefer. Like I prefer this look because realistically it makes sense instead of having it just hang. So, but you have the option either way. Okay, would this work on a wireframe? I've been asked that before, I don't think so. You kinda need some support for the weight of the um, rubber costume and all the embellishment pieces. Uh, and it would be like when I'm cinching my zip ties to get those scales on, I'm putting on them like a lot of tension. So I need it to have the stability and zip tying that between wire rings you might split the welds, um, you know, as, as those are sectioned all the way around the wreath frame, I think they might separate. But that's why the ring board was put in place. And um, Patsy says you could put a piece of Velcro in the head and on the flame so they could be attached if needed or moved. Yeah, you could. There's so many different things that you could do. Um, Sandra said, what size ring board did you use? This is a 15 and a half um, unique in the creek ring board. As far as I know, there's only one size. So 15.5 is what you need. Um, okay. Let's see what else. Did I miss anything else? Okay, so yes. When this goes to replay, I will post the Amazon links for the costume and you can pick them in whatever color. Like you've already seen me do red, you've seen me do green. This is um, black. I've also done silver, which was the ice dragon. And then I'm going to be making the gold one with the gold wings. We're not doing a tutorial on it because we've already like really over exhausted that. Um, but the reason why I do it on the ring board and I keep this look generally the same is because it fits to ship. If we did the one that's S shaped that goes like this, it's too large to ship to be worth shipping it. So everything comes just like this. The tail comes unattached. If you're interested in purchasing this one, it is available for sale on my website. Did I even pin that? No. What the heck? I didn't even pin that. Um, it's castcreationsandmore.com. Um, you'll just see like the dragon head, I believe. It doesn't have the other pieces attached. And no, I didn't pin that. So I'm not going to go look for it. But now it's pinned to the bottom. Also, if you'd like to join the private group, that is where that's at but the black dragon it's black and gold um is officially down it's the only one i'm making and like i said i'm going to do the gold one i'm going to play with different color ideas and kind of figure out what i want to do with that direction but i hope you found this tutorial so much easier to follow through the entire process you can pick out whatever colors you want to make yours this is just the method that I use to create mine. 
but I'm hoping that showing you all the steps makes it so much easier. Have you ever thought about using the dragon head and the wings for a seahorse? Mm, yeah, you could. You probably have to use the green or the blue one, but yeah, feel free to jump on that and take that in a totally different direction. My whole goal when I first started this is when people were creating them, nobody could ship them because they were just too big. So I was like, okay, there's got to be a way keeping our box size down to 24 inch. You know, it's a little bit larger than a 24 inch. I think it, the finished design, like I said, when you come in and you pull these out, you can make it go bigger. But for shipping purposes, we keep everything tight and enclosed in the box so that it saves you money, um, which is always a benefit. And, um, make it as affordable as we possibly can. Okay. Well, I'm super glad about that. Um, Tensi, she said very, very easy to follow your tutorial. Best tutorial ever. Thank you for that. I'm not like trying to compete with anybody else. I'm like, Hey, if I just want to teach and that's always my thing is how do I break it down and teach this so that my dad who's 80 years old could make that. I need to make sure that I'm explaining the steps and also why am I doing the steps? Why, you know, why are you gluing instead of leaving that? Why do you use zip ties instead of rubber bands? Why the ring board instead of a frame board? So, um, so the question popped up, a friend does for, says, how do you join the private group? Go to catscreationsandmore.com when that page loads. Right on the top, it says join Cats Creations private group. You can join monthly, or like I said, if you want to save some money and pay for the year up front, uh, I think you save like two and a half months or something like that on your monthly fee. So I'd love to have you guys join me. We're going to be working on some amazing stuff coming up for Halloween. So we've got a couple more wreath designs to finish for the month of June, and then we're full scale. Um, all the creative stuff for all the busy time of the year and looking on some new designs that you haven't seen before. So I hope you guys will follow me. I'd love to have you guys follow me on Facebook. Obviously, YouTubers, just subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss any of my tutorials. All right. Thank you so much, Penny. She said, I've learned a lot from watching you. Um, Karen says, a uh, very good teacher. Thank you, Anna, for sending me stars. Um, Neil, says beautiful I love you made it easy to follow and understand thank you so that's my goal and if you have any questions make sure you um comment below you can also email me at info at catscreationsandmore.com um I will save you guys the the agony and the what do you call it um I won't give you a detailed materials list, but if you want that, that's what private group members get. So plus they get discounts on some of their materials and that's always a bonus, especially now. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Have a great weekend and I look forward to meeting with you guys next week with two new designs and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now, everyone.